Hey everyone, you're listening to InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy, a podcast with tips to make your life easier, covering pop culture, parenting, travel, minimalism, and more. Hey everybody, and welcome to InfoQuench. This is Amy. And I'm Jeff. I want to tell you a little story about a mother and daughter who are preparing supper together. Oh, this sounds riveting. It is. They're cooking a roast. Oh, a roast. And the daughter's getting some tips from her mother about spices and things she should add to the roast and the temperature to set the oven at. And the, the mother says, make sure you cut just about an inch off the end of the roast. And the daughter's like, okay. And she's like, well, why do, why do you want me to do that? And she said, I, don't, I think it makes it more tender. Uh-huh. And she said, I'm actually not 100% sure why you do that. But she said, my mother always cut an inch off the roast, so I'm going to, you know... Maybe give her a call and find out why I do that. The traditional passing down of family recipes kind of thing. I think that's where you're going with this. Yes. So the grandmother is called. Right. And and the mother asks, okay, you know, we're just sitting here. We're making a meal and I'm telling my daughter, I got to cut an inch off the roast. I... But I'm not 100% sure why. You know, what is it because we want to make it more tender? And the grandmother's like... I, it's because of my roasting pan was too short. Just, <laughs> so it was every very roast, practical. Every roast we had to cook, I had to cut a little bit off because it wouldn't fit in my pan. I'm that's sure you guys so, have a bigger pan. That's so great because you, like, as you were telling that story, I was thinking, okay, this is like, you know, information being passed down from generation to generation. Well, how beautiful. But then it was just a very practical thing. It was a practical, <laughs> yes. But it was, sometimes you need to question where these tips come from because sometimes things are done without really asking why. Is that, is that basically telling our listeners to just take our tips with a grain of salt? Oh, take, oh, 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 look at that little would recipe you, tie-in. Would you put salt on the old roast? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, I think you should take everything with a grain of salt. It's true. Because I just love salt. And you're telling this story for a larger reason as well, right? Because today is a, sp- a very special day in the United States and Canada. And probably in other countries, but I'm not sure. I know the UK celebrated Mother's Day a little while back. But That's today, right. as we're recording this, it's Mother's Day here in Canada. Um, we're going to release this episode a little later this week. Yes. So uh, we wanted to do something that was, I guess, a little special for our mothers. Yes. We want to talk about the stuff our moms taught us. Right. And we and we should always uh you know um keep in the forefront too the you know the 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 very real you know um instance where where people don't don't have their mothers any longer but they always they will remember, you know. And uh I just wanted to always you know put that out there because a lot of people get pretty sad around Mother's Day, you know, when their mother's passed or whatever and so it's it's yeah, it's a celebration in all ways, but it can be sad. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. to the mothers out there who this is a hard day for you, hopefully um or people who have lost a, a mother, then you know, hopefully Yeah, you know. But um but you know, uh w- the one thing that you want to do the most while our mothers are still here on this earth is celebrate them. And even it, Charlie wants to celebrate them. Yeah, so them. even Char- Charlie's like, mothers! <laughs> no, it's true. And we, there are so many, I, I know when I talk to our son, Hux, I hear so many things come out of my mouth and I hear my mother. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people Me are too. like, oh, I hear Me my too. mother. But I actually am very proud of some of the things that, you know, I pass along. And because my mom taught me a lot of great stuff. And yeah. Jeff and I, both have we're blessed with amazing moms. Yes, we are. You know, I know not everybody has uh, are as fortunate as we are. So they have taught us some stuff, and we're going to share it with you. Yeah. One of the first things my mother taught me is that money is filthy. Money, yes. And if you if you touch if you touch <laughs> this like is the, a in the very literal bill. sense, the literal sense that money is yes, filthy. Yes, I know. That's what I mean. Like, and instantly you would have to wash your hands. Correct. Oh yes. Like it's just, as soon as you touched it. And you know? it's not just, you know, she doesn't just tell me the money's dirty. She has to create a little visual of some old man picked his nose and picked his bum and then touched that penny. Like It's, it's yeah, never just, true. you know, the money's dirty. You're There's right. a whole backstory. For There's why always the money a backstory. Is absolutely There's disgusting. Always a, do you know where that $5 bill has been? Well, no, actually. There's no way for me to know. <laughs> well, I, I think it may have been in the gutter and then... You know, somebody <laughs> stepped on it, and then gum was stuck to it. So and for then God's sakes, wash your hands after you touch anything that's of, you know, 
any kind of currency really. It's true. And and our little our little guy, he's six, Huxley, he he has like a like a, a wooden chest full of quarters. <laughs> so he just plays with them like they're Lego. I know, I know. And every time he does, I'm like, Go wash your hands, go I, wash your it's hands. It's true, you do. I and have I will attest to that. Every time Amy's like, Go wash your hands. Yeah. And I, I remember working uh, as a cashier part time when I was in university and every time I was in the cash register I would think of my mother and I was yeah. like, Oh, I gotta That's go wash a good my hands. one though. It is a good one because you, you really do you really do want to be wary of that. Because, like you know, people people use people still use dollar bills for cocaine, I'm sure of it. Oh yes, there's. You know, I remember hearing. I don't know if don't, it's true or not, but that there's traces of cocaine on pretty much any bill that you come across. Any bill? Yes. Really? Well, yeah. Even like, the five dollar. That bills? Pablo Escobar was. <laughs> pa- pa- if you've watched, if you've watched, if you've watched uh, yeah. Narcos, oh, you'd know all about. Uh, we should Escobar do, we should do a podcast on that, hun. Oh yeah, on no, that no, show, a, like just it's just such a great, a show. great show. But I digress. Money yeah. is filthy, and also my mother has taught me a healthy <clears throat> respect for the filth of public bathrooms. Oh, and there is a healthy respect for that. Yes, yes. You, you know. never know where those bathrooms have been either, you know. <laughs> don't touch the doorknobs. Don't touch, don't, yeah. Use the paper towel to turn the taps off when you're finished. You know what um, I've noticed? Don't, and don't touch your face after you've touched the money because that's how you get sick. If you put your hands near your mouth or your eyes, you've got to wash your hands, people. <laughs> wash your hands like a maniac. <laughs> So you, you thanks, know, I, mom. You know that, yeah. Thank you, mom. <laughs> and that's why you know, and I don't get sick very often. And I can that's good. I, I credit it to my healthy hand washing habits. You know what I've noticed? You must have passed some of that, uh, some of that, uh, you know, information down to to Huxley, our little guy, because I'll take him to the bathroom. Okay, he'll he'll use the washroom, and then and then he'll wash his hands, but he'll refuse to like push the like the hand dryer, the electric hand dryer, or whatever. Uh, with his actual hand, he uses he uses his elbow, like he want he'll oh, really? his default is oh, to use so his proud. elbow so he doesn't. Put I'm his really hand proud at this moment. I know it's uh, it's pretty funny actually. It's uh, I don't know. I'm like, where did you? And uh, maybe I taught him. Yeah, it was me. It was all me. <laughs> yeah, right. It was all me. Did you teach him to flush the toilet with his foot? Uh, I have. That's not. when the yoga comes into play. Yeah, I have not. I don't. I think he's a little young for that. He's six. <laughs> I mean, he would look pretty cool doing that though. I'm done. <laughs> Get his foot out. Yeah. So what are some other things my mother's taught me? I have a long list here. Go outside and blow the stink off you. Yeah. That is one of my mother's favorite sayings. But getting yeah. outside and having fresh air. She always says that you will not sleep any better than if uh, if you do some physical work um, or just get outside and get some fresh air. But make sure you come home before the streetlights come on. And and I remember you telling me this story too, that, that your your mother had a, had a, a love for... Um, clothes and uh and blankets that were out on the line right oh, yeah oh i love that smell yeah, is the see. best smell so that's something she's passed but that's down before to well. the, the summer of the army worm epidemic oh do yeah. you tell well there was a some there was a summer of an army worm epidemic and there were army was worms it an everywhere. infiltration yeah well they were nobody could put their clothes out in the line but they'd be covered in army worms did they have semi-automatic weapons <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why they're called army worms i don't know if that's like know. a I'm from Hampton, New Brunswick, oh. originally, and uh, we live in St. John. But I don't know if that's a Hampton saying or if no, army no, worms I, I've is heard like of a, army worms as well. Like it's the I actual heard, like yeah, scientific Latin term for <laughs> that type of worm. <laughs> All right, and she's instilled in me a real healthy dose of fear of strangers. Yes, and when we were kids, we actually even had a password. So if you're if she would always say nobody is going to be sent to go and pick you up from school that you don't know but if that were to ever happen uh there must have been some story of somebody being I think abducted it was a movie i think where, it was and the and the story that the the stranger gave the kid was you know your parents were in an accident and i'm here to pick you up from school right um, so we had a a password and i still remember it it was well, I don't remember if it was Frogger or Froggy. I think it was Frogger after that video game, video Frogger. Game, yeah. And it was only me and my... I was, we were forbidden to share that password with anyone. I actually have a little bit of guilt. You just, say, just giving saying it her right password. Now? Wow. So if anyone says that password, I have to go with them. No. But the, <laughs> but the I think just having a password just instilled, <laughs> instilled the... Uh, That's hilarious. You know, the idea that they're, you know, that nobody's going to have the password. Nobody's uh, meant to, to pick you up and... 
anyway, so I had I had a healthy dose of uh, fear when it came to strangers, and I've taught that to Hawks, which is even more but important. But you know what? It works, right? It works. It does. That's how we stay safe. And and actually, wait, maybe we should share what we did, <laughs> what we did to our own child one day because he 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 he's not one that runs away. You know, he's he's not one of those kids that just kind of takes off and you got to run after him. But at the same time, when he was younger, like he was kind of, he was wondering. He was kind of wondering. So yeah, yeah, he he had went through a phase. He went through a phase, and then uh, we were coming out of a restaurant, and Amy and I had this like, you know, we, we had the plan, and uh, he took off in front of us, and we hid behind like these like, you know. Uh, we were in a safe environment, it was sort of a contained yeah. environment where there weren't really a lot of people there. And we could still see him. So it's not like we were hiding and he couldn't see us. We, we basically him. wanted him to realize that if he ran away and couldn't right. see us, we wanted him to know the fear of of uh, not being able to, to find us. And yeah. That sounds really awful. I hope people... <laughs> no, no, but it was it was controlled. And you know what? Sometimes I think that that's what's, that is that is like a, a tactic you need to use with children, right? 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 Charlie, yeah. I don't know. You Charlie know. might disagree with our tactics. But no, I think it's a good tactic because you know it worked. He never did it again. It's Well, it's true. I mean, we do do a lot of traveling. We're in busy airports and, and yeah. environments. And if you're in cities and things like that, even him, uh, you know, moving a few feet can put him out of eyesight. So he's... He's very uh, conscientious of making sure that he always has eyes on us. Yeah, he was temporarily panicked, and then that was enough for him not to ever do it again. <laughs> I think my mother did the same thing. I'll have to ask her about this. I feel like she did this to me in a Zeller's. Yeah, I don't think my mom had to do it for me. I don't me. know if she did it, or I just I was just like, felt yeah, like I, I got know. lost for a minute. Anyways, I'll have to ask her about that. But anyway. I was always just like, yeah, I know. I'm not supposed to run. I, I got it. So if you if you got the guts to do that to your <laughs> child, it's a tip that actually does work. And you know what? If you think that we're awful parents for doing that, comment away on all of our social media channels. Yeah. We love the engagement. We have them all. We have all of the social media channels. I don't monitor them. Amy does. And she is a wizard with this stuff. Oh, and I just found out today that if you just like something on Facebook... You won't continue seeing that feed necessarily. So if you if there are pages and things that you like, like Info Quench Podcast on Facebook, yeah. make sure that you choose uh, an action other than like. So yeah. choose you know the love icon or the even the sad. Really, if you just, I didn't know that. I've I never, just found I've, this out today. From, I've never used anything yeah. but the like comment. And I, I used that. A, a friend of ours, and she was telling me that she found that out with particularly you know with business pages and things like that. But that, like, but the like button. Not to get on a big tangent, but the like button has is not. It doesn't mean you. For most people, it doesn't mean you actually like what people are saying. It means that you've seen it. That's basically what well, it means. Well, and that's why they want you to engage by picking right. something more specific. The okay. like is too easy. It's super easy. That's all I use, though. I'm not, I'm not into using the big gold angry face and stuff like that's <laughs> not my thing. So back to our mom tips. Yeah, I got one. All right. My mom always told me to uh, tell the truth, and I have a little story about that that she, uh, you know, she retold today when we were uh, hanging out at the Queen Square Farmers Market, which is amazing. Oh, it was hopping today. Today was, it was opening so day. so uh, incredible. We're in St. John and it's, a, yeah, it's an amazing market. I just, I, I crave the, the very first market so I can get that Korean food fix. It's so good. Anyway, uh, but y- you name it, you can get it there and check it out. Queen Square Farmers Market in St. John, New Brunswick, anytime. Every Sunday. Every Sunday, not two. anytime. <laughs> not anytime. Uh, just, yeah, 2 a.m. nobody will be there. Yeah, It'll just be an empty park. But anyway, so when I was like five or six years old, uh, my sister was younger than me and I pushed her and she, like, I don't know what it was. Maybe we were fighting over a toy or something like that. I pushed her and she hit her uh, lip on a stone step and split it open and it was bleeding. And my mother came to me and she was like, Jeff, did you push her? And I was like, no, 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 no. And then I went to my room, and my mom came in. She's like, "Well, that's good. I just always want you to tell me the truth, and you know, just you know." Okay. And then I stood in my, I stayed in my room for you know about five or ten minutes, and then I came out and I'm like, "I pushed her. I pushed her, mom. I pushed her. I didn't mean to." <laughs> and then uh, my mom, my mom, when she told the story today, she's like, "Most parents would just like, you're grounded. Get to your room. Why did you push your sister?" But I just. But my mom just looked at me and gave me a big hug and made me feel like it was the right thing to tell the truth. And then I have not told a lie since. 
<laughs> okay, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> to this very moment when I lie about lying. To this very moment when I'm lying. But no, that's that's one of the things. And I find that those things are the most valuable that a parent can teach their child is like life lessons like that, you know, where it doesn't pay. It doesn't pay to lie. Why? You're just fooling yourself. You're not fooling anybody, right? You're lying to yourself first and foremost. But anyway, that was uh, that's my story for now. What's your next one? <laughs> no, it's a great story, and it really, you know, says a lot about who you are. And, yeah. And you know, your your mom is to thank for that. Yeah. Uh, I bet. I mean, my my mom has a lot of you know quick sayings <coughs> and things like that. That one thing is never eat potato salad at a potluck. <laughs> I never understood that one. I well, never hear of anybody has, getting it has sick. Mayonnaise in it and eggs, and you can get salmonella and just having. She just taught me a really healthy respect for food spoilage in general and how well, yes, you know, things food can't spoilage. sit out on the co- counter for two minutes or they're going to start to grow bacteria. There's a whole there's a whole movement about that, how, you know, the best before dates that are on, you know, the food that you eat from the superstore or from like, you know, your local uh, grocery mart or whatever. It's like it, you can have you can eat it far past that, but that's just the thing that they do for safety. I you know? know, but I mean, I won't even eat something on the like the expired date because i'm like was it does it expire first thing in the morning or does it expire at midnight <laughs> i don't know if they're that precise <laughs> i think it's okay to go at least a day or two after after the expiry date myself but but i have not yet had maybe not poisoning with me. except for that i had burrito food. that you brought had, me home oh yes that that's right that's another podcast <laughs> oh my goodness I, should, I shouldn't have trusted you um you know, I guess going a little deeper, my mother has taught me the importance of laughter, you know? Yeah. My parents are always laughing. Uh, they still do. And, they, you know, yeah, all true. growing up. And they just keep a really positive outlook, even through really difficult times. And Yeah. And she's taught me, you know, well, I'll, I'll tell a little story yeah. about when mom and dad were, I think it was before I was even born. I'll probably get some of these details wrong, but you'll get the gist of it. They were camping at... Uh, it was a KOA down in Nova Scotia. This is in the and, 70s, probably? <laughs> um, probably. Yeah, it was probably in the 70s. 70s. Yeah, it would have been Early in the 70s. 80s. Um, yeah, before I was born. So, yeah, say mid-70s. And they were walking by this trampoline. And my dad was really, he really wanted to go on the trampoline. My parents have been together since they were teenagers. But they, like I said, they were probably in their early 20s at this time. So mom was like, uh, I think it'll be a little awkward if you get on that trampoline with all those kids on there. Yeah, yeah, She's like, so I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, Joe. That's my dad's name. She's like, I'll tell you what, Joe. We'll, after dark, you know, when the kids are all asleep, uh, we'll walk back up here and you can just, you know, go to town on the trampoline. <laughs> I love <this>. So <laughs> they... That's what they did. They waited and probably had a few drinks. Kids went home, went uh, to bed. You know, had a bonfire. And they decided they were going to walk over to where the trampoline was. And I guess mom said that my dad actually broke into a run. He was like ridiculously excited. And it was just sort of over a knoll, a knoll, uh, a blind knoll. And he kind of, he jumped up in the air and crossed his arms and actually yelled Geronimo. <laughs> and then he never came back up. <laughs> and mom walked, ran up and he, and he was sitting in the bottom of like the little hole that they, you know, they scoop out below a trampoline so it doesn't hit the ground. And he's like, they take the trampoline in at night. <laughs> you know so, what? You know what I the love? Moral, the moral of that story is look before you leap. You know, but you, you know what I love about that story, though, the most is that is how giddy your father, who I don't know how old he was at that point, how how giddy he was to just get on a trampoline like that's life itself like that's that's amazing yes i hope we all never lose that aspect of life you but know? look before you leave but yeah look before you leave <laughs> otherwise you're just gonna he was you know, not he was not injured in this story because probably uh, he was at a young age and i think if i did that now i probably wouldn't walk for a few <laughs> days but anyways i i never forgot that story but my parents always you know even we were going through really hard times when my dad was in the hospital and stuff and uh, you know, we can still still find the try to find the bright side yeah. of things, and it is important. Oh, it is, it is. 
All right. So when okay, so my last thing that I said about my mother, which was like you know never or never tell the truth. I mean always tell the truth. Uh, so that's a more of a philosophical one. This one is a more practical thing, and I I actually there's a funny story about this too. So we were at the Queen Square Farmers Market today, and my friend Andre Robichaud is one of the uh, you know owners of the and runner he runs the thing and i noticed that one of the big garbage bags was full <laughs> so i walked over and i was going to help him out right but it was so full it wouldn't come out like you know just pulling it up so i was like ah. and my mom was like laying down or like sitting on a blanket not too far away and i i laid it down and i yelled over i'm like mom this is one of the things you taught me for sure and then i just laid it on its side and it slid out just so slick you know, and then I didn't realize that I yelled it. I know and there were a lot these, of people. Watching. All these people like looked. and They just started laughing, like they just because it is Mother's Day. It's just like, anyways, it cracked people up. But anyway, so there's it a worked tip. like a charm, and you gave that tip on another episode, I think. Oh, did I? But I'm, it was I'm, good to see it and in, in demonstrated I'm, today. I'm being redundant. No, that's, that's okay. okay. Yeah, How no, subtle was I? It was funny. No, that was, it was it was it was like it was classic. Yeah, it was good to see that anyway. tip, and she and she she looked at me and she said it's because of the suction. If you just try to yeah. pull it out, she's like, you got to put it on its side it'll break the suction from the bag so thanks for that one mom <laughs> uh some more quick things my mother taught me the value of craft pizza mixes oh yes i don't know if you've discovered craft pizza mixes but if you don't have them in your life this is something that you probably should introduce in your life we i've had those since i was a kid and they're super easy to make and we probably have pizza at least once a week um you really just add water to the dough and it yeah. anyways if everything's all in there craft pizza mixes amazing They're, they are amazing and but i want to add a little bit to that uh because it is another one of my uh of my things that my mother has taught me which is what we're talking about on this podcast by the way we're we're celebrating our moms and uh you should all celebrate our moms um so th- happiness is homemade <laughs> so this is in direct contrast of what you just said <laughs> because my well, mom ma- i know i make i make them all the time but when, the I, when i know but when i was home like it, it would be like if i said hey let's let's order a pizza my mom would be the first to say i'll just make one i'll just make one right from scratch <laughs> and she would and so that's just like something i mean i do make things from your scratch. mom's an amazing amazing She's an cook incredible too. cook like oh my goodness like it's unbelievable Anyway, let's not get it. That's another podcast altogether. Another quick one from my mom. Never write down anything you don't want someone else to read. And I remember, Mm. you know, that was long before social media. I remember her saying that. Don't write a note. Just picture, you know, the worst person (laughs) reading that, whatever you've written down. And if you think it's going to cause somebody harm or hurt, um, don't don't write it down don't put pen to paper and i still exercise that to this day whether it's you know in electronic electronic format an email yes. or in social media i'm always super careful and i just picture you know that somebody might come across this sometime and it you know so that's a really never good write one. down anything you don't want somebody else to read that's why i have so many novels i've written that are just you know stacked up in the in the closet i don't want anybody to read them this is why i don't have a diary <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't write a novel. I'm just joking. Uh, my mother taught me the importance of taking care of your teeth. Yes. My mother has beautiful teeth. She, uh, there, she had, you know, she just, she's taken care of her teeth her whole life. Um, not had any major dental issues, and you know, just brushing and flossing. Well, you've never had a cat. I know all parents life. teach I you I that, but that my mother really, you know, is possible. But and she taught me the importance of smiling. Mm-hmm. So making use, I think that's why, you know, she felt teeth are important because she, she feels that, you know, if you smile, the world will smile back. It's that true. life will be a little bit easier if you walk around with a smile. And um, I think that when parents smile at their kids, they have a tendency to smile back at, you know, you see oh, the baby, yeah. they say that babies will smile back yes. and then they sort of learn that. Yes. And then when you smile, it just makes you happier. It does. It just opens up your heart. So. With the uh, sunshine in. And with the smiling, she also taught me a healthy respect for guilt. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> parenting with smiling with guilt, comes guilt. Parenting with guilt is truly effective. It is. Um, because even when you don't catch your kids, they still feel guilty and they're still punished with yes. mental anguish. Yes. So thanks, mom. Yes, thank you for that. And I'm I, and I'm already instilling yeah, that well into Hux. I really, I really want to hear a story. But do you have a story about instilling guilt? Has your mother instilled oh, guilt in you in a way? She that, has, but I don't have a story at the ready. What about sneaking out? 
or anything like that? Did they ever guilt you oh, about no, that? No, I don't know. This also I don't tell. Don't, my mother also said, don't say anything on podcasts that you don't want your kids <laughs> to hear down the road. Oh no, she knows <laughs> all about it. Before no, our kids. Oh, oh right. <laughs> don't don't sneak. You gotta wait till they're adults before you tell them how all the bad things you did. Oh, that's, that's true. She did tell me that. Why don't we just sit Hux down tomorrow morning and just tell them every single bad thing that we did? <laughs> What would he think of us? I think that almost gives him permission to basically do everything you did in a little bit worse, right? I think that's why parents sort of hold that back until they're adults and they're like, okay, we're out of the woods. We can Unless now you let, teach them the difference. Lay it, on, lay it out for them. That's right. So, yeah, we'll just keep that under wraps until he's an adult. And then we'll do a whole podcast on all the bad stuff we did as kids. Well, we, yeah, we've, we've all done bad things and you learn from them, right? And the key to wearing makeup is to look good without looking made up. Oh, what do you mean? Just being subtle with your makeup? Yeah. My mother always said that you shouldn't, people shouldn't be able to tell you're wearing makeup. You should just look better. Yes. Without them knowing why. You don't need to like, It's you like know, a magic act. Pack it on or anything. You just need to. Yeah. Mom, I'm giving away all our secrets. Water. <laughs> all She's our talk- secrets. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Water. Yeah. Water is super important. Whenever I was sick. Mm-hmm. And still, when I'm sick, mom's like, drink lots of water. It cleans your system. It's good for your skin. Yep. Water is the elixir of life, and it does definitely keep you healthy. That's something I could do a little bit better as drinking water. You could, I don't, yeah. I don't drink a lot of water. I don't. But uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I prefer beer. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. No, water is super good for you, and... As I take a sip of my Aperol spritz, we're recording this on a Sunday and I know it's, but it's Mother's Day people. So yeah, don't Mother's judge Day. me. Don't judge me. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> so another thing that my mother has taught me is make the best of what you have. You know, you may not have like, for example, you know, the, 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 uh, glitziest and the most expensive home, but the home that you live in, make it yours. Make it what you want it to be. Make it somewhere that you feel safe and loved and you'll be happy, you know? And it's it's so true. You just make the, make the best of what you have. If you have, like, if you go camping and you don't have a two-person tent, well, you make the best of a one-person tent. No. I read a quote. Uh, I, I was looking at mother. Means, I was looking. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't just know. made I, that like, up. Is that, yeah. And I don't even know like if sharing that a tent with somebody else and you just make the best of that one-person well, tent. Well, it's my way of saying I'm getting really big. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. I uh, was reading a bunch of Mother's Day stuff, quotes and things like that, just looking for uh, social media content. And then one of the quotes I read was, home is where your mom is. Nah, uh, yeah, that's that's great. Home that is, is where true. your we mom always, is. It always feels like home with your mom. Yeah. Uh, you know, mom's taught me a lot of stuff around work ethic, too. My mother has an amazingly strong work ethic. And she always taught me that, you know, you don't ever be at work and not have something to do she's like there's always work to be done you make sure that you keep yourself busy and always yeah. add value wherever you're at so if you know you just and when i hear people uh you know talk about what you know what they learn from their parents about different things i just i there's so yeah. many there's such a wide spectrum of things that my mother has taught me from uh because she w- was in the workforce you know as i was yeah. growing up so she's taught me a lot that is i've used throughout my career but then also in how to be a mom yeah. uh and just you know general life skills your and mom's I'm, your mom's an amazing person i'm really appreciative of that yeah she is she's a truly amazing person and she's, she's taught th- me about finances they, i was just gonna say the they taught you stuff. they taught you about like you you have you have great stories about like you know you you had an allowance quite early on and you were responsible for it if you went over and above what they gave you then that's your fault you only you know you could do what you could with it yeah so, yeah she definitely taught me money management skills yeah and, anyways mom i I, uh, th- I could talk for, th- you know, hours about all the things that you've taught me, but I wanted to just cover a few of the highlights. And uh, same with you, mom. I'm always, I'm still learning from you. I'm still learning all the tips of life and you teach with such graciousness and so much love and you always think about others before yourself and I just love you so much. So love you, mom. Love you, mom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to visit InfoQuench.com to subscribe and catch up on past episodes. You can also check out InfoQuench on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Till next time. time.